Hello guys, welcome to the channel IT Simplified. I hope you're finding the videos useful. In today's video, I'm here to talk about Azure Active Directory, Azure AD Domain Services and how it compares to Windows Active Directory because I find that uh, there are a lot of confusion uh, in the field about uh, what are these services are and uh, some of the confusion they arises from because uh, in all these three services, there is Active Directory which is common but uh, is not in some way or the other similar to the one that we are used to on-prem so today I'll try to break down what are the three differences and also some of the uh, similarities uh, between three three services so with that let me just uh, move to my whiteboard so today we are here to talk about uh, Azure AD then we look at uh, Azure Active Directory Domain Services also known as Azure ADDS and uh, then the Windows Active Directory So the first question arises, what are what are the similarities or you know what is common between these three services? The first thing that is common between these three services is that uh, uh, it is all these three are identity and security services. So you can use them for authentication, you can use this for securing the infrastructure whatever you have in your in your organization so say for example if uh, Girish is a user in any organization uh, the administrator of that uh, organization can assign specific roles or what kind of access you can have uh, whether it's Azure Active Directory whether it's Azure Active Directory domain services or Windows Active Directory so this is common in all the three uh, scenarios so it doesn't matter you're using Azure AD, ADDS or Windows Active Directory all three are identity and security services now second common thing between these are that uh, in all these three services you'll find users and groups it is same across the board the same way you will uh, group uh, the users so if you have an organization in which you have say uh, sales uh, uh, department you can group all the users within the sales department under the sales group and you can assign permissions rather than assigning to individual users so all these three services the common thing is that you also have users and groups which is similar in Azure Active Directory Azure Active Directory domain services and Windows Active Directory uh, as far as I know these are the three these are the two common things between all these three services now the question arises why there are three different services and then what are the three different what are the core differences between these three services so let me just open another blackboard let's look at the differences between these three Azure AD Azure AD domain services and Windows Active Directory so the first difference that is between all these three sources that Azure AD uses the new uh, protocol for authentication which is SAML authentication right so all these new cloud services if you look at they uses uh, uh, the SAML authentication so in case you want to give access to these cloud application you can give this so they all use a SAML which is different from the way that we are known about uh, the on-prem active directory which uses Kerberos uh, authentication which is not the case within Azure Active Directory so say for example if you have certain apps on-prem and you want to give them access uh, uh, by using Azure Active Directory uh, the option that you have is to rewrite the code 
for that application so that it is compared with the SAML authentication. But in certain cases, some of these applications are old and they have dependencies on the Kerberos uh, authentication, so you're not able to rewrite. So in that case, you won't be able to use Azure Active Directory for those kind of applications. But a lot of customers, if you're not familiar with the Azure Active Directory, uh, you already are using or on the verge of using Office 365. And a lot of customers that they don't know is that uh, regardless of which version of Office 365 you're using, you'll be using Azure Active Directory for your identity services. So when a user uh, in Office 365, whether it's Exchange Online or any of those kind of services, uh, log into the portal, the identity is uh, checked within Azure Active Directory. Actually, you can go uh, into the portal of Azure and you'll see that all those users out there, which are there in the Office 365, they are uh, same way they are in Azure Active Directory. So that's one difference you will say between Azure Active Directory and Azure AD DS that Azure AD they uses the new kind of authentication which is called SAML whereas Azure AD DS or Windows Active Directory they uses Kerberos authentication. Right. So that's one thing. Now, other thing is that uh, the way you can do LDAP query against Windows Active Directory or even in fact against Azure ADDS, you cannot do that against Azure Active Directory because that is not what it is meant for. Uh, the other thing I want to point out over here is that uh, Azure AD is, is a sort of uh, uh, a kind of pass services so there is no virtual machine or there is no server which is running in Azure uh, infrastructure. Uh, it is purely an identity and security services. There is no domain services role. Uh, it, the only function of Azure Active Directory is that it will authenticate your identity if you subscribe to the services. Whereas Azure Active Directory domain services as well as Windows Active Directory, the difference between, I will say, between Azure ADDS and Windows Active Directory is that uh, you can use Windows Active Directory the way we are known for using it online. You can also use Windows Active Directory by spinning a virtual machine within Azure environment and assigning the role of uh, uh, domain services. So that becomes your domain controller. Whereas Azure Active Directory domain services or Azure ADDS is a pass kind of offering in that uh, if you subscribe to this services, which I'm going to show you in a moment, what Azure does is that it will spin up two virtual machines which will be acting as a domain controller for high availability. So you'll have two VMs which will be acting as a domain controller for high availability. You will access it by uh, through the administrative tool. So you won't be having access uh, to, to the, uh, you won't be having enterprise server access uh, to these uh, VMs and you won't see those VMs. The only way you're going to access this through the administrative tool and you can same way the way you apply GPOs, the same way you uh, create OUs and all those things you'll be able to do within Azure Active Directory domain services. Uh, very similar to Windows Active Directory in which you have the GPOs, you have uh, OUs and uh, all those things, all that control that you want. The difference I would say between Azure AD and uh, DS and Windows Active Directory, uh, you won't be having enterprise server uh, kind of uh, 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 control within Azure AD domain services because it's a pass kind of offering or platform as a service. So they cannot give you that kind of access. So all the backups, replications and everything will be responsibility of uh, uh, Azure uh, to take or Microsoft to take care of that. Whereas if you spin up a virtual machine and assign the role of the main controller, you will have a full control. You'll be an enterprise server, very similar to the way it is on-prem. And you'll be responsible for backing it up. If you want a high availability, you can put that in an availability set or maybe scale set. So uh, that, that I would say is the difference between Azure ADDS and Windows Active Directory. So to summarize the similarities, what we talked about is the both all the three options, Azure AD, Azure AD DS and Windows Active Directory, they are identity and security services. So there is no difference in that. All three options will have users and groups. So you can, you can uh, 
uh, compile them within within that group and you can uh, give access to them that's where the uh, the similarity stops and when it comes to differences Azure AD they use a SAML kind of authentication which is a new kind of protocol whereas Azure ADDS and Windows Active Directory whether it's on-prem or if I deploy it as an IaaS services within Azure they use the regular Kerberos kind of authentication and to both Azure ADDS and Windows Active Directory I can create my GPOs my OUs and everything which is not there within Azure Active Directory plus Azure ADDS is a pass kind of offering so what does that mean is uh, you will have access to the services through an administrative tool. So what Microsoft does is that by default it will spin up two virtual machines for you for high availability. So one uh, one is getting patched up or there's update uh, going on. The other one is highly available and you'll be accessing it through the administrative tool. You won't be having access as an, uh, as an enterprise uh, at the enterprise server level, but you can create the way you create on a Windows Active Directory. You can uh, create organizational units, you can create GPOs, and you can have a same control. You can domain join a virtual machine, uh, very similar to Windows Active Directory, which you cannot do on Azure AD. So that's, that's uh, uh, another difference I will say. Now, if you want to know what are the different flavors, just want to tell you that uh, Azure Active Directory comes in four flavors. So you get a free option, you get a basic and premium one and premium two. Also want to point out here is that if you're using Office 365 uh, E3 or E5, it is Enterprise Mobility and Security Suite. You'll be using the premium version, premium one or premium two, depending upon whether it's E3 and E5. But some of the differences, if you want to go through, you can go through this link and that gives you some of the differences such as uh, uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, object limit between free and obviously the other option. But uh, as you scroll down, you will see that uh, the difference is much more uh, visible uh, as compared to the f uh, free and basic to the to the premium version so you can you can go through this this page is generally available if you google this you 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 can you will find that so at least this gives you an idea about what are the difference between these three options also want to point out over here is that if you go to the pricing calculator of azure and if you go under identity there is an option of azure active directory and if i go on the view it will take me to the Azure AD. So let me just move to the region, depending on what you have. And then if you expand this, uh, uh, the tier, you see that you have four options, free, basic, premium one, and premium two. Now, if I go to the basic, it goes by the number of users. So any of the option that you choose, uh, that's the way it's gonna, they're gonna price you. So depending upon how many users you have. Now, basic version doesn't have a multi-factor authentication but if you want to add you can also add the multi-factor authentication with basic the premium one and premium two comes with them mfa uh, so if i expand this it again you can either go by per user or you can go by per authentication so just to give an idea for 10 users it's going to be 17 dollars two cents and uh, if i move this to premium one say for example uh, you will see that it says available as a standalone service with per user and per authentication or bundled with Azure Active Directory Premium uh, and Enterprise Mobility Suite E3 or E5. So MFA is included if you pick the Premium 1 or Premium 2 version. So that, that will be included in that. So you don't need to go separately. So if you pick Premium 1, you can, you can just go with this and multi-factor authentication will be included for you. The other thing is the domain services, which I talked about Azure AD domain services, and it goes by the number of directory objects and for how long those services will be available. And there are three, three tiers, 0 to 25,000, 25,000 to million and uh, million to 5 million. Uh, so these are the three tier level and it goes for how long the services will be available. So if I am under the say first year zero to 25,000 for running 24 seven, 
it will be $135.69 in that case if you want to use the Azure AD domain services so it's a PaaS offering which I told you and uh, Azure will be responsible for running those domain controller you will be accessing it through the administrative tools that's how you can access you won't be having the enterprise uh, admin uh, kind of access uh, but uh, but most of the stuff that you require when it comes to use domain joining group policy objects you'll be able to perform via the via the Azure AD domain services and uh, yeah, you can always change the currency for me it is Canadian dollar which is uh, which is okay so let me so I was looking at the other stuff so just uh, just ignore those those options here so this is what you call this is some of the differences between azure ad azure ad domain services and windows active directory so let me just show you uh, if i go to my azure portal i'm logged in as my administrator you will see that you have the option of azure active directory so if i click on this as i told you very similar to the other option you have the users and group option you can add the app that you want to give access to people and then you can uh, you can assign to the to that specific group uh, but you can see that there is no way of domain joining a virtual machine because there is no virtual machine uh, running in this case but uh, for a uh, new kind of uh, apps or cloud app which uses saml authentication you can utilize azure active directory and give access to the user the other option which I talked about is Azure AD domain services. So if I pick this from here, it will ask me to create Azure AD domain services. And uh, I can go through the basic configuration. And as you can see over here, if I spin up a virtual machine, it is not spinning a virtual machine. It is doing in the background, but it is a platform as a service kind of offering from from Azure, I can pick whatever DNS domain name or whatever company name I have, and then I will fill this information, and Microsoft will will uh, spin up two virtual machine, which will be acting as a domain controller in separate update domain and fault domain for high availability, and I can access it via the administrative tool, and uh, I can do the same way that I use the on-prem Active Directory or even the Active Directory. Uh, on, on a virtual machine within within Azure if that is what I want to do so you, you can you have that option also available within Azure so I hope uh, this gives you uh, some of the idea about uh, what are the similarities and differences between these three services and how to price them out thanks for watching have a good day